the program you've seen. We wanted to give as many possibilities for people to talk about and also we will have some live events. We also wanted to have an opportunity for people to meet like they in a normal uh, life would do. There's a one-to-one -one, uh, talks, but people can also find each other in the chat or they can meet. How do we deal with the sustainability, the ecological part of traveling around the world? There's a second part that's, uh, I mentioned it already, to be more inclusive. Um, that's an important thing, of course, that we're all working on. And the third part is also the digitalization of uh, the work. We'll start with the presentation of a very special book. It's the book Independent Music Theatre in Europe. And I promised I would show the book. Yeah. This is what it looks like. I started the book project because I felt there's very little research about music theatre in general. And with music theatre, we mean now roughly the whole field of music theatre, which is not opera. The way I decided to make pieces is very open for people with little experience in listening or watching music theatre in any of its form. We gathered about 50 artists from a dozen different countries from all over the world. And I wanted to create a space where we can really really speak to one another. But first we need to critically examine this crossroads, it's social crossroads. I, in my work, try to create space because I really believe a theater space is a healing space and is a space for ritual. In the time of uh, Brecht and Wilde, they brought the jazz orchestra to the stage. We go back to the Baroque, uh, which is also um, uh, something that we relate to this excessiveness, this, this decadence. and we make musical journalism. It's always documentary concerts about emotional blind spots. I'm interested also in the issue of the role of the audience, how the audience impacts the performance and kind of co-creates the performance. Yeah, but this time we called it a musical and it's called Anthropocene the Musical. Yeah, and we wanted to, to choose a very complex theme and try to fit it into a musical. So that's why we chose- uh, It's like an impossible yeah. assignment. White supremacy is not necessarily about telling people that they don't belong. Sometimes if you see only white people on stage, only performing shows by white people, then someone comes and they say, ah, I don't think I belong. But you can combat that very simply by making sure that there's, you know, great artists represented from a more interesting and, and diverse background. <laughs> We're gonna start with the programmer's pitch. We're gonna do it a different way this time. Uh, normally artists pitch their work, um, but in this session we will turn things around. Jorge Alba is a grounded composer, constantly exploring new forms of performance, either with light, sound, and in technological devices built by him. You can really see Rajiv's hand here. Very good sense of style, rhythm, dynamics. The feminine characters in opera, and she will do research about uh, libretto and composers to see if there can uh, be another point of view than the stereotypes as we know it. So uh, very interesting, and she will work with other female opera directors to, uh, to do research and create uh, several operas. Oh. 